Hey, what's up? We have Andrew Cashin on the pod today. I have allergies, and that's obvious. Uh, but I didn't when we recorded this interview. I'm about to pass the mic to Shelby, but first, yeah, we have one mic. But first, I just got to say, if you don't know who Andrew Cashin is, he's one of the most accomplished, prolific, well-liked musicians in Austin today. And uh, just really, he always kills. We've seen him several times live. He slays. Okay, Shelby's turn. Andrew Cashin is a cool name. I don't know what you have to do back in like the day to like end up with a name like Cashin. Like, you know how people were bakers and then like they become that's their last name, Baker. You know, I don't know, maybe something to do with Cashew. Regardless, it's a cool name. And he's a cool guy. And uh, something that really resonated with me with this like conversation when I think back on it is like how just matter of fact things were with him. Like you just make it. You just keep making stuff. You just make another thing and then you write something and you just do it and a lot of times I get caught up in like the weird stuff like looking for secrets and like oh here's how you can like do this better and like this can become like easier and stuff but really it's just like you just do it you just make the thing um and I feel like he illuminated that a little bit at least for me in this interview so hope you enjoy Andrew C dude's in a bunch of projects cool guy cool name everything's just cool so cool all right all right, here's the end of it. You know, let's just get it out of the way. We blew it last week. Uh, big time. Oh. As far as the... <laughs> it was just crazy, like, because uh, it hit Josh, and then, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, it hit, I don't know, whatever. It hit us at different times, and we both felt very embarrassed. Oh. So, Honestly, sorry Honestly, this it. is way easier. I was in France, and there's a time difference, and mm-hmm. I was, like, traveling in between countries, and this is... This is better. Yeah. Yeah. What like were you doing? Hometown. What were you doing in France? What's what's the? Uh, I was recording uh, the next Giant Dog album. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Why'd you guys go to France? Because we're stupid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds no, awesome. We. It was actually kind of a spur of the moment. We went on tour, and then our tour manager. We were discussing recording the next one, and we needed to get it done this year. Mm-hmm. And we had no plan. We had a couple producers in mind, but they all fell through, and we had some money to spend, and he was like, I know these people in a place called Angers. It's like kind of northern France. They got a killer studio, and he played me some stuff that they recorded, and it sounded great, and we were just like, let's do it. It sounds fun. Let's go to the northern French countryside and seclude ourselves and make an album. Yeah. And it was just great. The al- The album's fantastic. All oh, right on. How how do you guys write? Do you um did you have everything ready to go like before you went over like all the parts? Yeah, out? this this next one. We usually just sit down and knock out some songs, but this next one's was an ordeal. It's a concept album about virtual reality. All the songs like interline with each other. Uh, there's a whole story. There's characters. We wrote a TV series to go along with it. Oh, cool. It's like a big production thing. Um, so the, it, we've been writing it for like a year and a half, two years. Whoa. Yeah, we wrote a lot of it during the pandemic, but yeah. Is this it's, your like first foray into concept stuff? Like specific, I mean, especially on this scale? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it was just, everything was like immaculately thought through. Like even the songs, you can read them like a poem, like from start to finish. Like everything is very well thought out and we've never written like that before it was tough yeah it sounds a little little sounds like a lot of extra work you're challenging yourselves yeah 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 Yeah. yeah. it's our like fifth or sixth studio albums who are just like yeah let's do something crazy and different and yeah yeah and i think it worked out hopefully (laughs) that's i mean it's it's cool it's all like a big art project and you and sabrina have written together so much between sweet spirit and giant dog like how do you guys like like balance all those plates like you're you're in like four different projects and then like you guys you and her write <coughs> together a lot so yep i mean isn't it feels like cumbersome with just this huge art project for a giant dog and yeah i mean the the time felt right because we did have a lot of time as everyone did mm-hmm. like during the pandemic mm-hmm. uh but yeah i don't know i just we've always written a lot um yeah, actually, I feel it's kind of slowed down a little bit. We used to just, like, tour, 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 write an album, record, tour, tour, tour. Like, mm-hmm. 
yeah, we've actually had some time to like sit and think. So I don't know. It was fun. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I will if I have to. But yeah, it was it was tough, but it was challenging in a good way. Yeah. What's the how how does it work with? Uh, okay, so you said you got a TV series to go along with this album. Like, what's the the process of pitching that and how does that even work there's so much involved in that like what's the well i said we have a tv series we have it's supposed to be a nine episode tv series we wrote three episodes and kind of like an outline of the rest but Mm -hmm. like fully written three and then we kind of went i don't know how to pitch this like we have a couple friends in la but it's it's tough like you got to know people gosh yeah i would imagine yeah hopefully along the way somebody hears that Somebody hears the album yeah, and says, okay, this could work. Let me get you in touch with someone. But yeah, I don't really know how that works. I'm not a Hollywood, L.A. person. Yeah. I've lived in Austin for too long. <laughs> too yeah. long? Ready to get out? No, no, no. I love oh. Austin. Oh, I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> where where did you come from originally? Like, what's the... Uh, me and Sabrina grew up in Houston. Oh, okay. Or, like, right outside of Houston. Like, Houston suburb called spring yeah we went to high school there and then everybody kind of split off going to college and then we all kind of reconvened in austin a couple years later and i've moved to to new york some people have moved and come back like Mm -hmm. but yeah we basically lived here for like 14 15 years or something yeah yeah so you and sabrina have known each other for a long time oh yeah and you guys have you guys always like artistically collaborated like that um so the way we met, Sabrina was hanging out with us. There was this like teen club where we lived called Java Jazz, and I was in a really shitty punk band back then. Uh, but she would come, or they would come and see us play, and then we had like a homecoming dance offer. And we put together a band from like all these other bands that we were in and Sabrina decided to sing. I think we did two shows covering like Joan Jett and just like rock, classic rock songs. Mm -hmm. And it was easy and it worked out and Sabrina has a great voice. And, but then after that, yeah, we all kind of, it was homecoming. It was like our senior year or something like that. Yeah. Then we all kind of moved away. Sabrina moved to New York then came back to Austin, and we just kind of reconvened. I wasn't in a band at that time. I was in a band in Houston, but I moved to Austin. I was just I kind of gave up on playing music. Uh, I was going to come to Austin to go to school for graphic design. But then I started hanging out with Sabrina, and they had notebooks filled with poetry that was amazing. And I had like a hundred songs on this like dictaphone, like little yeah yeah the device you record college lectures with oh okay it's just like a little machine where you just yeah. press record and play similar to that of home alone like when he had kind of home. yeah yeah it was okay. a talk boy talk wasn't boy, it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i mean same concept yeah, yeah okay yeah that's what i'm imagining <laughs> yeah but yeah i had like a hundred or so songs on that and i was just like yeah let's try to do something mm-hmm. Dang. and a lot happened yeah 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 and it happened real fast too we wrote two albums in a span of like two or three years really yeah and then people wanted to put it out and we're like great yeah how did you start getting like yeah like uh i guess interest and stuff were you like promoting it or did you know people or how did the initial kind of spark happen with that yeah we just kind of immersed ourselves it was intimidating like Mm -hmm. moving to austin and trying to insert yourself into this well-established music scene but we just kind of did. We just threw ourselves head first, started going to like Continental Club first, hanging out with like Black Joe Lewis and oh, cool. just meeting people in the industry and just trying to make friends, really. Yeah. And then we started playing shows at Beerland. Mm-hmm. And then someone from Old Emo's saw us play at Beerland. They're like, do you want to play a show at Emo's? And we were like, what? Like, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah just from there, you just keep playing and gain interest yeah try to put on the best live show you possibly can every night yeah that's what i was gonna ask too because like uh you guys have like specifically to me 
uh, in the Austin scene, I don't think there's anybody more fun or more entertaining to watch than you guys. Anytime I've seen you, I'm just like, damn, that's a good band. And you guys like are very fun to watch too. And so I wonder how much of that, like you guys like actively think about and talk about versus like what just happens, like when you guys play. No, I think we've been doing it for so long. There were some weird like first shows of just like, what are we doing? What kind Mm -hmm. of, what kind of music are we playing? Okay. We definitely like navigated as we were going along. Yeah. Just like what kind of band we wanted to be. And then we would write one song and like that went over really well. Let's do more of that. Mm. Like let's do more of that song. You know, just like write something similar to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're talking about like went over well with the audience or with yeah like yeah, with yeah. we'd play one song that was like maybe a little bit faster than stuff we had recorded and we saw the reaction we're just like okay let's okay. do that like yeah and just kind of figuring it out from there and now it's all right it's all ingrained and we right. know what we are and what we want to sound like and, mm-hmm. but yeah you just kind of got to figure it out as you go I yeah. guess. it's as organic as it gets just crowd testing it yeah yeah and we still do that, even with new stuff. Like, we've been playing the stuff that we just recorded, like, two or three of those songs, and just figuring out, like, oh, okay. Like, the crowd was already singing along to one of them mm-hmm. the last time we played at Mohawk, and we're like, okay, I guess we did something good with that. Like, yeah. it's not even out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. I feel like if you get people singing the song that they don't even know, that that's yeah. probably some sort of... <laughs> yeah, a little bit of validating. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do you, uh, when you guys... I don't know how much like live music you actively go out and try and like watch, but I find I feel like I find myself doing that where you're like like I'll be at a show watching someone and then I'm watching the crowd just because it is interesting to see like oh they did this and this is how the crowd reacted and that's just it is interesting and then even yeah. to gauge yourself like oh that like really clicked yeah. with me whatever they're doing here and then analyzing it do you do that a lot like go out and analyze shows and yeah absolutely um, yeah I used to work at Hotel Vegas. Oh, okay. Like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I got to see tons of great bands. Tons of great bands that are still around who, like, started out, like, not being very good. And I got to see them progress into, like, fantastic bands. Mm-hmm. Um, I still go out to shows all the time. Some of my friends don't anymore. But yeah, that's still one of my favorite pastimes is immersing myself in the Austin music scene. Yeah. It's great. Mm-hmm. You can go out any night of the week and see fantastic bands anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't want to say oversaturated or something like that, but it is crazy. Like you're saying, like, it's especially like to your point earlier about like, how do you immerse yourself? How do you get in? Because there is so many good bands here and it's like, you go out and it's like, man, the competition is stiff, but it's like, that's a good thing, but yeah. it is kind of, you know, it's interesting here. It's stiff and it's it's not that competitive, I've found. Like mm-hmm. trying to play music in Houston, it it's not competitive. It's just like not really. There's not a whole lot of camaraderie. Oh, okay. Here, like I've seen bands that play like hardcore and then like dream pop, and they play a show together, and they're just like, yeah, yeah you guys are pretty good. Like <laughs> <laughs> it That's doesn't cool. matter what kind of music you play, as long as you're cool people and you're not like assholes or anything. Like yeah. people generally like appreciate you yeah and support you yeah 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 that's interesting it is an interesting scene i mean like not like i've been a part of like very many scenes but just even from the outside it's unique like there's something unique here and it's weird to see like certain things rise up and then certain things kind of like because you'll go watch somebody and you're like damn these guys are really good and like they're playing to like me and the bartender you know yeah it's it's kind of weird like that and you're just like what but it's it can go either way around here, you know. There can be a band that you might I might not even understand, and I'm watching them. And there's like tons of people, and everybody's into it. And it's mm-hmm. like it is cool that there's an opportunity for a bunch of uh, lack of a better term, weird stuff here, you know, yeah. which is really nice. That's the automatic cat feeder. Oh, yeah. you've got one of those, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it goes off. What time is it? 11 a.m. every day. It gets fed. Yeah, it's a little snack. <laughs> it's snack time. <laughs> um. Uh, Oh, yeah, so that was your story with the giant dog, but yeah, I know that that was first, and then Sweet Spirit came later. Mm-hmm. Um, just really quick, like, backstory on that and, and the current status of, of Sweet Spirit. Uh, Sweet Spirit. Sabrina had just dissolved a band called Bobby Jealousy and wanted to start a project of their own. 
and I also had, I mean, kind of same thing. I had a bunch of songs just in my Rolodex Mm -hmm. of like, I can't use this for a giant dog. Uh, It's a little too, I don't know, mellow or poppy or whatever. There's still great songs, but like, it's not going to fit for what a giant dog's established ourselves as. Uh, And then I think initially I was just going to come play guitar, but then I just started handing these songs over to the band and they're like, yeah, 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 let's do this. And yeah, I guess that's how that started. Um, Because they had shows booked as Bobby Jealousy in January, I forget what year, maybe like 2015, Hmm. but the band dissolved. It was December. So we had to fill those slots. Hmm. And so we just like, we pumped out eight songs, like enough to play a set as this new band and fill those slots that had already been booked. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we, we did it. We had like seven practices in like two weeks or something like that. And we knocked it out and yeah, played an opening slot. And then the next time somebody was like, Hey, can you guys do a closing slot? Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, played a bunch of shows and worked out pretty good. Yeah. I mean, like a year later we were on tour and, then we got invited to go on tour with Spoon. Then we got invited to go on tour with uh, Harmar. And yeah. Couch Radio is a podcast that you're listening to. We interview bands we like. We're in Austin, Texas. We'll travel though. So tell us who you want us to interview and we'll try our best to interview them. We also have a band. And that band sounds like this. <laughs> You like that? Great. <laughs> uh, check us out on Spotify and everywhere else you get music. Um, back to the show. Yeah. For anyone listening, you can find all these bands on Spotify, and they're all really successful. And it's just cool hearing the backstory of how like organically and small it started. Yeah. Um, is that the first time you met Spoon? Was when they became was uh with Brit Dan- with Brit Daniels becoming a fan of Sweet Spirit? No. Um, I'm just curious because I know as a solo artist, you just, you just opened for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't remember exactly how we met. I think he came to a show. We were probably only playing for like 15 or 20 people. I forget what venue, but he's just like, he just came up to us and he was like, yeah, your songs are really good. And then we just started hanging out. I just we kept seeing each other. And then... At some point, he was like, we should write a song together. And he came over to my house, and Sabrina was there. And we wrote a song. It's on Spotify. But we wrote one song together. Then we recorded it. And then Sweet Spirit covered a Spoon song. Because I heard... One, I heard one of their songs a really long time ago, and I was like, this would be cool if it was sped up and like, like, because the original song, I, it just has like weird synthy drum stuff. Hmm. And Britt was like, yeah, that's great. Uh, I'll come sing it. And we're like, cool. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. And so we put out a split. It wasn't a split. It was like Sweet Spirit and Britt Daniel, hmm. but it was like a little seven inch thing that we did. The song's really good. I just don't think anyone's heard it because it came out a long time ago and kind of went under the radar. Yeah, I have to check that out. But then, yeah, ever since that, like that writing process was super easy. Now he comes and every time we're in a studio, he'll come and pop in and listen or add stuff. Or He's just really easy to work with and we're friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, cool. What about, um, I always like mess it up because then his last name's Eno and it's just like, I always want to say Brian, and I know oh, that yeah. that's wrong with Jim, right? Yeah. Like, is I, the production of Spoon has always been like, you know, from when I got into it, and then which was after they had put out how many records, but even going back to, I just like impressed by so much. Like Hot Thoughts to me, I was just like, this is the best sounding thing I think I've ever heard. Like as far as like everything sounding the way it is and what they decided to do. Do you work with him in that way at all? Like, 
production wise or anything like that or is there like times where you guys are in the studio even with Britt where it's like he's like kind of dropping stuff like oh this would be really cool and like things that you might not have thought about I guess yeah I've, we've done that with Britt I haven't really we've had like sessions with Jim I've mm-hmm. been to his recording studio public hi-fi mm-hmm. which is great it's a fantastic recording studio uh we did this thing like song confessional with Walker Lukens mm-hmm. yeah I heard that where you just you write somebody confesses a song, you take their confession, you write a song that day, then I guess the next day you go into a recording studio, record it. It's all like super fast. But we did that at Public Hi Fi, and yeah, Jim's great. Uh, I just haven't had an opportunity to like work with him one on one or work with yeah. him on a whole album or something like that. I would love to, but. Yeah, no, I was just curious. I mean, all these guys are like kind of like legendary creatures to me or whatever, especially within the Austin music scene. And, uh, you know, much like, you know, like you guys, it's just like consistently good stuff. Like, oh, it's like consistent how good it is. It's like, you know, Spoon puts out a recent record and I'm just like, yeah, it sounds great. Like, I don't know why I'm, I shouldn't be, I'm not surprised, but it's just impressive, you know? So, you know, I don't know. I guess I was just, I'm just curious about all this. All this is like mystical lore to me, you know? <laughs> Well, yeah, I got a. I wrote a song on the last Spoon album. Oh, it really? Just came out. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't. I didn't go through the liner Which notes. Which one was song? Because I saw you post something on your Instagram story about it. The Devil and Mr. Jones. I think really? It's like number three or four on the latest oh, album. Oh man, that's awesome. I'm gonna have to listen with uh, different ears because. Yeah. So. No, that was a pandemic thing too. I would, same thing. I just had a bunch of songs and I was going through them and I came upon one and I was like, this doesn't sound like. Giant Dog, Sweet Spirit, or my solo stuff. Yeah. And I just sent it to Britt, like, via text message. And he's just like, yeah, this is great. Uh, I'll write lyrics and have it back to you in, like, a week. I was oh, like, oh, really? All right. That was easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's great. And he did. He had, like, a version of him playing acoustic guitar. And then he went into maybe, like, a home studio or something and flushed out, like, a mm-hmm. kind of full band version. And then what's on the album is like completely different from either of those, but really, yeah, I well, thought it came out great. Yeah, what made you decide to send that? Did you were you just thinking like, oh, I bet their voice could really work with this, or was it just? Well, yeah, yeah, I heard. I think I heard his voice uh-huh. kind of mm-hmm. singing the melody yeah. in my head. Um, but also that I was just fucking starved for any kind of musical collaboration with anyone because it. Okay. Yeah, it was the pandemic. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just like, even if I can do this virtually or through text message, like, just collaborating with someone and making music would cure my depression right now. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is is that something that's like kind of going on in your head all the time? Like, I think it's kind of weird. It's like a blessing and a curse. Like, writing music, especially when you do it a bunch, that it's just kind of always running around in there. It seems like from what you said about having all these songs on the dictaphone, even when uh, you might not have been sure if that's what you were going to do with your life and like now and, and talking about the pandemic and just having stuff, does it feel like that to you that like, it's a little bit of like a nagging thing all the time. Like, here's the thing I have to write it down. Here's the thing I have to record it. Like, I mean, nagging is a weird word. Um, Negative, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) It's just something I'll probably always do whether I'm playing music or not, like even when I'm driving, if I hear something, I'll, I'll just turn on voice memo and go like, like and whistle mm-hmm. it into my phone and then set it down. And sometimes I don't even go back and listen to it. I know it's garbage, but I just do it <laughs> to get it out, to get it out. And like, maybe I'll come upon it in like six months and be like, Whoa, that was actually kind of good. I should flush this out and yeah, yeah. play it on guitar. And yeah, I think the voice memos in the notes app, Mm-hmm. is responsible for so much great music out right now oh, because yeah. it's just the best that's, tools a musician can have. That's how I write. It's yeah. voice memo notes. Right. Like, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It's a game changer, yeah. for sure. And I don't need to carry around this stupid dictaphone with me anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, be very hip right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a crank in like a suitcase. Ugh, I like, wish we... Crank it up. <laughs> I think I still have it, too. I wish I would have brought it just to like yeah. show this <laughs> outdated... Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. You send us a picture of it. We'll throw it in the YouTube video. Sure. I'll, yeah. I, I can probably track it down. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny too. Thinking about like the voice memo specific app, like what you said about just 
putting down like a little melody. I find myself doing that. If I have a melody, I won't flesh it out and I'll just like put it into the phone and then I'll go back and listen. And a lot of times I'm at like work and it's like super loud and I can't even hear what I'm saying. Like I just don't do it very well. And then mm-hmm. you hear these stories about like, you know, I don't know, members of Eagles like here's a demo and it sounds like immaculate. Like it's perfect. They put all this work into this demo and I'm kind of wondering for myself if the ease of everything it's like I don't have to set anything up and then I just like crappily do something and I think I sell things short sometimes and I don't know. I just like wonder about idea. that. Yeah, I wonder if like even the you having a dictaphone and having to go and do it and making it, you know, is there a benefit to that in some way that we're now lacking? I don't know. To me, keeping things raw works better for me. Okay. I've done the whole like garage band demos where I flush everything out. Mm-hmm. I'm just not that good at recording myself. So when I do that, I listen back to it, and I was like, huh, I kind of hate this song now. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. After I flush everything out on my own and it's recorded terribly, like, I like keeping it as raw as possible. Mm-hmm. Just a melody, just a riff. Yeah. And then f- bringing it to other people or, like, I'm about to go in the recording studio. All that, I've done no demos whatsoever. I just kind of like building it in the studio mm-hmm. with good equipment. Mm-hmm. And like being satisfied with that. Yeah. Now I, I get the benefit for sure of it being malleable and, and not too confined. Cause I feel like when you're, when you're trying to produce things, you end up kind of accidentally confining it because you're yeah. limited to what you can do and then you can't hear it another way. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> like I make it something that, and now I can't unhear it. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. And then, then you, you lose your excitement about it. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a bad thing. But so today, are you going to, um, have like a producer there that kind of makes realizations, you know, c- makes things come to be realized? Uh, so the last two albums that I've done solo, Josh Mary, who used to play guitar in Sweet Spirit has been there the entire time. We kind of co-produce it. He does a lot of producing, but we just kind of bounce. I, I just need someone to bounce ideas off of. Mm -hmm. If I just sit there by myself, I'm not that productive. But when I bounce ideas off of anyone, Josh and me work really well together, but things just happen a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's just something I need. I've always needed it. That's probably why I've worked with Sabrina for 20 years. It's just like having another brain to play ping pong with while you're being creative. Just it makes things so much more efficient and, quick and thousand percent yeah 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 we're we're in a band and it's just a two-piece right so mm-hmm. like i can't uh i i just feel like i if if he were to not be in it i just would give up like i, yeah. I can't just do it by myself yeah it's it's way too insular and, and i just end up hating things so uh, and you have no one to second guess you right like not every yeah. There's not a single person on the planet where every single one of their ideas is immaculate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need someone to go like, huh. Hey, uh-huh. Maybe, yeah. Maybe let's not add trumpets to this song. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You right just need to end. be checked. Yeah. Like, and conversely, well, you might think something's not great or you might think you even messed up that take and they might be like, no, that was, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Or it wasn't good. We need to do it again. Sure. Yeah. I'm really like lazy. I'll, uh-huh. I'll get it down first take and be like, yeah, that's fine. They're like, no, man, we need to, let's do it one more time. Like, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's cool you have someone you can trust that you can do that with. Yeah. I feel like it's really hard for someone to, for people just to find that other person or people that they really trust their mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah. Because there's probably going to be a lot of people in there where you're like, no, the take's fine. I don't even trust you. I don't even, yeah. I don't even trust your taste. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we argue, mm-hmm. but we're just, we're efficient at arguing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is rare. I mean, sometimes, yeah, there's people I'm in bands with and we'll duke it out and nothing comes of it. It's just mm-hmm. like, mm. yeah, this, when we argue, it's just like, okay, we can settle on this. That took 30 seconds. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I think something that's really, that I've found to be very beneficial about working with somebody else is that my brain will start going and it's like a train. It starts going in one direction and then you just have the, like your thoughts and you're kind of like thinking of the riff in this way or whatever. And even if the idea that comes back at you and the, from the other direction, isn't like that great. It's in, it's from a different, it's from like left field. It's from some other way that my brain wasn't thinking about things. And then that Mm -hmm. can get you in a different direction. And 
which I never would have got to without having just an outside, a complete outside force that's just like got this whole other idea of what it should be. Yeah. And I don't know. That's just such a like interesting thing to me because I don't see how else that could happen without like another brain, like an actual other brain. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. For me, it helps working with someone who's a little bit more classically trained in okay. music. Cause I'm not right. I so like taught myself how to play guitar. I don't know how to read music, mm-hmm. but I know I've got ideas and I can tell string players like, Hey, play that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. And they look at me like, come on, yeah. like I'm an idea guy. <laughs> well, yeah. They're like, can you write it down? Like in uh-huh. music form? And I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's been like the classic, uh, example of like, if Josh is playing something, because Josh plays guitar, I mean, like, I can play it now, too, but, like, not, mm-hmm. like, Josh, and so, like, a lot of times, like, we'll be in the studio or something, and he'll be playing something, I'm like, and I just go, like, I just kind of follow where my brain's, like, oh, I think you should do this, and then I just voice it, and yeah. he's, like, I don't, what, like, yeah. or whatever, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what good. note is, bum. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly, exactly. You gotta, you gotta be a little more specific than, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, like, yeah, but when you have, like, a good working relationship with someone, all of a sudden, they understand what you mean by that, yeah. and it's, like, it's cool. So it seems like you've got, that's cool that you have a dude like that. Well, you can really, yeah, it. I'll say like, bah, 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 and Josh will be like, it's a E D. Yeah. Play that. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. We, we tried to, we were recording some song at one point and we asked this dude to like put, I don't even remember the horn. trumpet trumpet mm-hmm. on it. I, and I think it was a bad idea anyways. I don't, I think it just wouldn't have worked out, but yeah, this dude was definitely like, write it down and we're like we can't we yeah. can't write it down but yeah. josh please you know like he was like these are the notes we just want you to play this and he's mm-hmm. like i think at one point he's like just so you guys know this is like very unprofessional or yeah. something like that he like oh, yeah. i've had, <laughs> I've had like, string players music. tell me that multiple times and it's just like well you're playing rock and roll like yeah, yeah. it's three notes yeah it's this order yeah you're just following the guitar yeah. i was like it's honestly crazy that you have this handicap where yeah. you can't just do this but those musicians that's how they learned how to play music. They yeah. read it. Yeah, right. Yeah, and if yeah. it's not in front of them and they can't read it, they're just like, I right. don't know. Like, well, I don't the, feel music. I read it. Like, that's, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, music is art. And, like, you know, just deciding that, oh, it has to be a certain way is just crazy or whatever, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I was always super impressed with people who could, like, I took piano lessons for, like, nine and a half minutes when I was, like, you know, in high school. And it was the lady who uh, played at church. And she could rip, too. And it was, like, really impressive but i asked her if she just would like sit down and jam once in a while and she's just like like she couldn't play unless it was like written yeah. in front, which is crazy to me that seems so much harder yeah <laughs> you know like to just like play like impressive stuff but as it's like the process of playing it at the speed it's supposed to be played in real time it mm-hmm. seems so crazy and so much harder but yeah i guess if that's how you learn i don't know it just seems like such a higher skill level i mean than- we're talking about it like it's crazy, but that's the majority of musicians. Yeah. Like the majority okay. of musicians, that's how they play music. Oh, man. That's, it's like that's just crazy. us rock and roll people who are just like, oh, you know, like you <laughs> tap your foot and you feel it. Like, yeah. Yeah. When you pick up a guitar, do you just go straight to just writing something new, like right off the rip? Yeah. Honestly, I don't even know how to play other people's songs that well. Yeah. I can look up tablature and learn them, but I, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't. I, it's funny because there's such a benefit to learning other people's songs, and like when I have, it has been fun. And I'm not even the guitar guy, but it's funny how like that's just my brain is just like, oh, just start. It just starts writing or whatever right when you pick it up. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know. That's an interesting phenomena too because I don't know. a lot of musicians like weird. never think to write their own thing or to create anything that's not there. Mm-hmm. And that's just the natural inclination of of just from the get go is what Shelby's saying. Yeah, is that how you feel? Like you're just like a just you pick it up straight into create creativity, not just like into technical efficiency or, or even like playing your own stuff. You probably move on from it pretty quick. I imagine yeah. with all these different projects. Yeah. I play my own stuff enough during practices and shows. Yeah. Um, now sometimes it, it happens two ways. One way I'll have a riff in my head. Mm-hmm. I'll be singing it in my head and then I run to a guitar and do it. Other times I just sit there with a the guitar and just start strumming chords I don't like that process. It's more, uh, it's more like homework. Then mm-hmm. I don't get any kind of like high off of that process. But some of the better stuff that I've written has come from sitting down and forcing myself to like 
try to create something that I've never heard before. Mm. Like that's usually when the most original stuff, the most creative stuff comes, but it's also kind of a pain to do. It feels like I'm writing a paper on music or something like that. Mm. Like, whereas like if I already have a riff, it's just like, okay, I'm going to teach myself this riff and it's going to be great. And I can move on. Yeah. I don't know. When you started teaching yourself how to play guitar, um, at, I guess probably teenagers, were you like a, in like your teenage 14? years? 14? Yeah. What were like your main guitar influences at the time? Or is that, is that too wide of a question? Mm, no. I mean, I was just listening to like Black Flag and Ramones and mm. Minor Threat. The perfect stuff to just start playing guitar too. You got yeah, power chords. And maybe. it's still, I still keep those it's all downstrokes and it's all fast and Mm -hmm. i I still play guitar like that um i think the riff that i started that i told myself i could play guitar was a is a green day that dun 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 brain stew brain stew yeah Yeah. i still like that song Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah but i just accidentally played it (laughs) i went dun dun and i was like "Ooh, i know this song What's the next, like, uh-huh. oh, figuring okay. it out. You're finding it. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, that was easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else can I play? Yeah, yeah. cool. Well, is, that this, is that the initial type of music that you were, like, that kind of made you realize, oh, I love music? Is that kind of stuff, like, uh, yeah, you know, old punk? Yeah. Um, th- I think that was, like, the first cassette tape that I bought was Green Day and Nirvana and... Uh, okay. that's when I really started to like spearhead, go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Just try to find every band that I could that was tougher and louder and heavier and mm-hmm. just like f- real quickly just went down that like, yeah. um, and then kind of matured a little bit, started listening to like Bowie and mm-hmm. I think Iggy pop led to like Bowie and, mm-hmm. oh yeah. uh, yeah, we had this this band called the guillotines that I looked up to a lot in high school. And I think I was listening to like no effects or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they're like, dude, you should listen to like Iggy pop. Like, mm-hmm. trust me. Like, and then gave us yeah. some music to listen to. And yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's such like an, inf- that's such a, like, just like a cool moment for like, if you're in high school to like have yeah. some band that you look for <laughs> up to, to be like, here, listen to this. Oh yeah. Yeah. We thought they were, cool like that was yeah. the epitome of cool they yeah. were like two or three years older than us and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's a moment yeah dude when you sing low I, I, it's like a mixture between iggy pop and like elvis yeah i mean it's really <laughs> it's it's sweet how you uh i mean i know on your new album like there's there's sounds where i feel like it's more in you know not either particularly uh but more elvisy more iggy mm-hmm. you know and there's even time like I think Bend Over in the Giant Dog like yep. that was like felt like Iggy Pop vibes yeah. and uh, so I was just gonna ask about like your your voice journey as far as like learning how to sing like because then you have these like high pretty songs too like on your new album uh, Follow You Down and mm-hmm. uh, on uh, In Love is that one I think so yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, so like that those were sung higher and I'm just like as I'm trying to like figure my voice out still so like mm-hmm. it's it's cool that you uh, are exploring that and how, how has that been? Uh, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, it's very vulnerable. So I feel like as a guitar player trying to learn, like learn your, how to hone, hone a voice. Cause you did it. I mean, follow you down. Vocal sounds so good. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Um, I do have a natural voice that I can sing in mm-hmm. and I've probably used it two or three times on both those albums, maybe two. The rest of it is all character. Mm. I'll like think of a character. For me, it's easier to say the things that I want to say when it's when you're acting, mm. instead of being really vulnerable and using your own voice and being like, "These are my feelings. If you guys don't like them, then it's on me." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll choose a character. I'll choose like a Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison character, and be mm-hmm. like. Like get in their brain, sing it the way they would, then it lets me be less self conscious about what I'm doing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, yeah, I approach ninety percent of the stuff that I do with that. In in a lyrical sense as well. Yeah. 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 Lyrically, 
and tonally and yeah i don't know why and performing it too it makes it way easier if you're just like <laughs> yeah i am johnny cash like yeah yeah. Mm, yeah it yeah you just get to not be yourself sure. and it's not on you it's on the character has an interesting like artistic approach yeah. yeah that is cool when did you stumble on that was that like your first solo album Mm, well, uh, maybe like two or three years before I made the solo album, I was on tour with the giant dog Yeah. and we were at like a house a lot like this. It was like an Airbnb and they had a guitar mm -hmm. and I started playing, I think it was Johnny Cash or Roy Orbison or something. And I did the. I, I, it was Johnny Cash. I was like, I keep a close watch. And I yeah. started singing like that. And Sabrina was like, you sound really good like that. Like, you should you should do that more. And that just kind of stuck with me. And then when I got to the point where I had the time and money to make a, a solo record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just like, can I write a whole album like that? And yeah, I, you did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're a band. Also, this is our podcast. I hope you're enjoying it. Our band sounds like this. new album cosmic silence um i mean how new is it now it's like a year old about a year old i think so so um that i was interested when you said earlier that you don't aren't you know super involved in like recording yourself or production or anything because the production on it feels very thoughtful and oh, it feels like no i i'm involved in the production okay yeah what, what yeah well what production aspects are you involved in and like how much like weight do you put on it because i was just really taken back by just the um i guess production quality mm -hmm. of of the new record i mean i i know exactly what every song is going to sound like and i can verbalize it yeah usually it's i'll take two artists and mash them together like mm -hmm. this sounds like electric light orchestra and william onyabor or some like weird mm -hmm. french artist or something like smash those two together that's what this song sounds like or what i want it to sound like we should use this kind of instrumentation and then, yeah. And then I'll usually bounce that off of Josh and Josh goes, I know exactly how to make that happen. Mm. We're going to use this synth, this Juno, we're going to use this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like he streamlines the process where me, nice. I might, if it was just by myself, I would have to like, okay, it's not this organ. Let me play this organ. No, mm -hmm. it's not that. Mm. It's not that. And it would yeah. take five times as long. Like he knows exactly where to go, how to do it, and how to do it efficiently. Yeah. He's also got a bunch of ideas about strings and string arrangements. Um, yeah. Are you a big like tone person, like just in general? Like, you know, you've, you're talking about your voice, so vocally, but also like, I mean, you're a guitar player, so have you gone down the pedal board rabbit hole of just kind of getting obsessed with tone? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I used to never use pedals. Mm -hmm. I used to be, I wouldn't even use a tuner. <laughs> I would just go straight into the amp. Yeah. Just because I thought that that's the way a guitar should sound. It sounded the most like yeah. raw power, just cranking the amp. Mm -hmm. um, then later, I think it was when I started doing bigger shows with a giant dog and especially Sweet Spirit. Sweet Spirit was when I was like, okay. I need some tone to yeah. the guitar. <laughs> like these are pop songs. Like mm -hmm. that's when I kind of went down the pedal rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. But still, I, I I don't know that much about pedals. Like yeah, I don't consider myself a guitar player. No, I play guitar, but like to me, it's it's a it's a means to an end of getting songs out. Right. Okay. It's a I, tool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about guitars in general. I know I like the way a SG sounds, mm -hmm. but <laughs> when people start talking about pickups and oh yeah, like gearheads, I'm just like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that sounds good. P90, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Triple hum, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's definitely a lot, for me too, like there's a line of like, you know, where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm really interested. And then it's like, okay, I'm not interested anymore, you know. Um, but yeah, I think maybe, I don't know. Yeah, because I remember seeing you play in SG and like, I don't know, you guys just, it all just does sound really good. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. It's like very like once you turn that on in your brain or for me, it was like that. It's like, oh, just chasing tone is like very I guess it's addicting or something. You know, I feel like you can get in the way, though, maybe, you know, you're able to turn out a bunch of songs and it might benefit you if you're not like, OK, it sounds good. We're going to keep this move forward. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather pump out 50 songs than mm-hmm. spend an hour hunting out a tone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you consider yourself like a songwriter first and foremost? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's basically all I am. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do they always start the same way? What's your process like? Is it like acoustic guitar and then? Yeah, acoustic guitar. Usually, I'll whistle a melody or hum a melody, and then. Mm-hmm. I don't really like writing lyrics. That's why I like working with Sabrina. Sabrina's really good at writing lyrics and really quick and efficient. Mm. Uh, to me, it's kind of pulling teeth, but I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have those moments where you're like driving and all of a sudden like it just like kind of comes into your brain and you've got like pretty soon you've got a melody for like all parts of the song and it kind of just yeah you know you've got it all ready to go and you just need to get to a guitar quick basically yeah 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 and that's when I'll whip out my phone and whistle something because like mm-hmm. yeah I've done it where I've had a whole song worked out and then forgot it forgot everything oh, yeah like, oh. yeah. What's your what's your that th- would have been the million dollars like yeah no that was it <laughs> that was the one the one that got away yeah. the white buffalo what is your thought on that like as far as like how much of it is like you sitting down and doing the work and how much of it is you just like channeling some other source because I kind of feel like how you know I'm not gonna say how I feel about it how do you feel about it about like where it comes from do you think like the you know like melodies and everything is directly correlated to like you know sitting down and doing the work or I don't know. I guess it feels somewhat mystical to me. Like you're channeling something. Like it just comes yeah. to you. Like what is that? I've heard other people talk about this too. I, I don't know where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I straight up rip somebody off and I just don't know it. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll give a mel- or I'll show something to someone like, you know, that's like, give me shelter. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's why I like it. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I'll ditch it. Or sometimes I'll be like, so what? Yeah. Let's give me shelter. We'll play it faster and no one will know. Like, <laughs> but yeah, there are some times where I just, you pluck it out of the sky mm-hmm. and it is completely original. You don't know where it comes from, but it makes you feel good Yeah, and you pursue it. I don't know where it comes from, but yeah. Is that the high? Is that the what? Is that like the high? You said, I don't, earlier oh. you're like, I don't get a high from this kind of thing, but. Like yeah. when you first just come up with the creation of something. Yeah. 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 It's like the best. We were, we were talking about that the other day, you know? Yeah. It's like the, the dragon. Well, the you chase. get, yeah, you get an initial high from like, ooh, I came up with something real good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when I flush it out with like Sabrina or something, and these lyrics make it even better, then uh-huh. you're like, ooh, now yeah. we've got something really good. Yeah. And I'm going to ride this for as long as I can. And then you go in the studio and you're like, all right, this is exactly what was in my brain now it's on record mm-hmm. yeah. now i can forget about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then write something else Decide. yeah yeah that is freeing the uh if you can keep like so the initial moment of like finding the riff or finding the melody is always very exciting and if you can keep building it and then next time say you bring it to sabrina and the lyrics make it even more exciting mm-hmm. and it keeps getting more exciting until until you decide to forget about it but i find like that's most difficult part for me is like it's almost the initial excitement of writing the riff and jamming it out which is kind of like what we do sometimes is like very exciting and then almost like you can't recapture the excitement it kind of diminishes a little bit so it's almost like a ticking time clock of like we need to kind of get this all figured out quickly yeah because i want to stay excited about it you know Mm -hmm. i don't know and also you got to fail too it's not like every every melody i come up with is great mm-hmm. sometimes the melody's great and i'll write a song and the lyrics are terrible mm. and i don't realize they're terrible until i was in the studio like there's songs that i've recorded in the studio that are never going to see the light of day because 
Mm. I listened to it and I was like, ooh, that's actually like really cringy and really lame. And I don't think I ever want to hear this song again. <laughs> but at the time when I was creating, I was like, yes, yeah, this is mm. great. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you're just blind and you think it's good. Mm. And even other people will tell you that it's good. Dangerous. But I just can't. If I'm like, if I hear this song played back, mm-hmm. I'm just going to cringe and I don't want to do that. So goodbye song. Yeah. <laughs> is it hard for you to cut ties when it's like that? To like, you it's, just putting so much work into it and stuff? Well, yeah, it's frustrating, especially when you get to the point where you're in a studio and you've spent a thousand bucks of studio time pursuing an idea and then realize you can't use it. That's frustrating. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, I'd like to vet the this is a lame song before I get to the studio. Mm. But I'm going in the studio with 12 songs today. And yeah, I, I guarantee you maybe like 10 of them will come out. Well, I'm definitely going to fail. Yeah. But you have to fail to succeed, mm-hmm. which sounds like something that's written on a third grade <laughs> yeah. chalkboard. Mm-hmm. So you're going to uh, the studio today to work on your solo yep. record? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And what studio are you going to? I don't know if it has a name. Uh, we're working with Stu Sykes. Um, he's done like White Stripes, Walkman, Loretta Lynn, mm. Cat Power. He's really good. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's an up and comer. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Real DIY type of guy. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, no, man, that's really cool. Do you, uh, I feel like, do you think that like your process, so like everybody makes music in their bedrooms and stuff mm-hmm. now with like, you know, logic and everything. And I, I feel like, I don't know, your process and everything just kind of all is, do you think it's molded by, like, your studio, like, um, loyalty to going in and playing to, with studios and stuff like that? Probably. If if I was going to do bedroom recording, mm-hmm. I'd get, like, a Tascam, like, tape. Eight, eight track or something. Or even four track. Yeah, yeah. Just something to still keep the ideas super simple. Mm-hmm. Like, I've thought about getting one for years, but, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, working with limitations is always really good. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to create your totally. own nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I yeah. would, I would, yeah, I would, drums, I would probably like, mm-hmm. like beat on a box or something like that mm-hmm. and just keep it like really rudimentary. Yeah. But, and it, it, to me, it would be fun trying to get stuff to sound cool on cassette tape or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to me, it's, yeah, having, the world at your fingertips using logic or something like that. It's just like, well, yeah, then I'm going to go down that rabbit hole and mm-hmm. it's going to have 50 layers on it and I'm going to end up hating it. And it's just not going to, yeah, it's not going to be the end product that I would want it to be. Yeah. And going through all that work is basically like trying to make it like an end product. I don't know. My brain just like, yeah, my brain hates that process. I don't know why. Mm. It's like the paradox of choice. I've heard that like, uh like our brains are capable of processing like seven different options or something so when you go to the grocery store and there's like 48 uh different types of pasta sauce and you kind of just freeze up i guess we're not built for that like well see i just stick my arm and knock all of them down (laughs) yeah Yeah. i'm not allowed in grocery stores (laughs) it is it's frustrating it's crazy like i literally will i know this is just me being a child but i'll be in the grocery store and i'll just like be standing there with the basket like just, I don't know even what to do. Like I'm like, a, or you just go for the one you always go for, and you don't even consider the other one. Yeah, I'm that yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. I like that when you have processes like set in place. Like it's like this is what I eat for breakfast. Okay, I don't have to think about it. Get it out. You know, like I really like that stuff. And it's almost like with you doing it in a recording s- studio the way you do with the specific people that you have around you. It's like okay, I write songs like this. This is how I do it. I'm able to like get them going and everything. It honestly seems super efficient. But then you smoke weed, and then you go to the grocery store, and all that flies out the window. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> you're then you're just stuck there like, yeah. man. <laughs> Paralyzed by one choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> frozen pizza or frozen pizza. <laughs> yeah. I <don't> know. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. Um, so we uh, we always in the podcast the same way. We're just asking three people uh, to – we always ask – what do we ask, Shelby? <laughs> Uh, we ask people. What's your favorite type of frozen pizza, bro? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you say DiGiorno, you can get out <laughs> right now. Um, None of this will be aired if you say DiGiorno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a test. It's a test at the end. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, we always just ask if there's like a couple of songs particularly that have been, you know, 
that aren't your own that you've been listening to a lot that have been inspiring you if you have any off the you know cuff mm. that you know of you're talking about lately yeah lately Anytime, just kind of what you're listening to or i don't know about songs bands um i tried to go see them when we were in france it's a band called la femme oh yeah we just saw them at levitation yeah, yeah. i missed that i really wanted to go see they were playing with black angels mm -hmm. but they were also playing like two weeks ago when we were in france i was about to get on a train and go to paris but i was exhausted yeah but that band the last like four albums that they've done are killer yeah. i couldn't name a song probably because they're in french but uh <laughs> yeah uh that band's killer i did buy some records i bought some serge gainsborough mm. uh kind of classic pop french pop yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and it's not even because we went to france i'm just like into yeah. french music right now mm -hmm. oh, okay uh think being dead i really like them local band mm -hmm. yeah zero percent apr is like their other band and they just came out with an album that's really good <laughs> i didn't know they had another band yeah, did I. I we just, just saw like that band. Band. it's great it's weirder it's weirder than is it? yeah it's the same line it's the same people right? same people yeah oh cool yeah interesting i'll have to check them out yeah um yeah just off the top of my head that's yeah yeah perfect cool. yeah did you, have, did you go ahead See, there's not many podcasts, but there's two <laughs> interviewers, <laughs> yeah. and there's a reason for that. Yeah. No, we, uh, we have this podcast playlist called uh, Couch Radio Playlist, and so we'll put, like, your podcast, and then we'll put, like, a song from each of the, the groups you just mentioned. Cool. I'm going to put It's Time to Wake Up by La Femme, because I'm really into that song right yeah. now. Those yeah. guys are really good. It was, uh, it was new. It was a new experience for me. I didn't even know them before I went and saw them live, which was, I don't know, that might have been good, but uh, mm -hmm. they're super cool. I went through, like, this big thing of listening to a bunch of French stuff, whatever I could find, but I was, like, very hard for me to find it because it's all, like, I don't know. Like, it's not in the language. I don't even know how to search it. I don't know. And it was, like, kind of just stemming off of listening to, like, I don't know, Brigitte Bardot and, um, like, uh, Francois Hardy Francois and stuff Hardy, like that. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't really gotten to a lot of contemporary French stuff, but I also am drawn to, like, French stuff, and I don't really know why. Yeah. Like, but it's... I just like the language. I like... Yeah, maybe it's the language, just, like, poetic like, in itself. Yeah, aesthetically, it's just, I don't know, it's lovely to listen to. Yeah. I don't know why, but. Well, I was over, I was in, um, I was in Europe for a little bit, and when I was in uh, France, I thought I had memorized, sorry, I don't speak French, do you speak English? I thought uh, I had it memorized, so yeah. I went around, like, saying it to everybody initially, and mm -hmm. they would always, like, laugh, and they'd be like, a little, <laughs> or whatever, <Yeah. laughs> yeah. and then I found out later, I'm like, oh, I've been saying this wrong the whole day, I don't even know what yeah. I've been saying, <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> I am not French English. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not Frenching. Yes. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, I was lazy. The only thing I learned was uh, Café Allongé. What? It's it basically Lange? American coffee. Oh, okay. Oh, really? It's espresso with a lot of water in it. <laughs> but I'll just wake up every morning, go to the same coffee shop, and oh, nice. Oh, American boy. Yeah, yeah. We'll give you your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Did it ruin you on bread? It ruined bread for me. Because it's just better. I don't know, you know, it's better stuff over there. Yeah, I, I learned that a couple of trips ago. Yeah. They, yeah, for breakfast, that's all they have is stale bread. Mm -hmm. Maybe croissants, but... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I bread, loved it. cheese, wine. It's not a bad life. Yeah, can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. I did this thing where I, like, walked through Spain, and so it started in France, though, and it was just interesting. Like, the farther into Spain you got, farther away from France you got, the bread just got worse and worse. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Um, stereotypes are true. What? <laughs> All stereotypes? Every single one. Yeah, every, every single one. <laughs> We've learned anything. You're that's here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, dude, thank you. I can't wait to hear yeah. this uh, giant dog album you yeah. just recorded. Dude, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm really excited to see what comes out of the the new uh, record for you, the new solo record. Yeah. You're about to go to the studio right now to record. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thanks for being so prolific because we just like all the stuff. Like, you just released some, Giant Dog released some, it's like, oh, this is good. Cool. You, your album, oh, this is good too. So, yeah, thanks for just keeping cranking it out. Yeah, for coming over after we've royally flubbed. Hey, this is a lot more fun than uh, Zoom or whatever we're going to use. Yeah. Yeah. This is nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
it? Two lines, man? Come on. That was solid. That was okay. <laughs> What's the name of the show? Horse name.